I want to just talk briefly about PV Grows itself. It's what we call a collaborative network, and the Higher Education Working Group uses that same model. Our specific mission, which we worked hard on crafting, was we are a network of people at the intersection of food systems and institutions of higher education in the Pioneer Valley. And tonight, it feels like we're very much at that intersection physically. Like, here we are, standing together and interacting. Let's get to the current round of lightning talks. We've been collecting information on Northampton's food and agriculture system as a basis for designing policies to support our farms and increase farm consumer linkages. The project has followed the Keep Farming Blueprint designed by the nonprofit Glenwood Center of New York, is laid out in this wonderful workbook that we've used. And Glenwood representatives have worked with us throughout the project. Most of our students did not grow up on farms, and they know little or nothing. Well, sometimes a little sometimes more than a little, but a lot of times very little, about farming. But they come inspired about farming as a, a, a career or a life skill that they want to use, and they're eager to get their hands dirty. They spend hours and hours meeting with markets and planning what they're going to grow in the, in the spring. They put to use all the sciences they've studied. They spend many more hours weeding and planting and tending and then harvesting. So a bit about where we came from is last semester the first course in this new uh, farm and food systems program was called Introduction to Food Systems. So that class, that class had three major goals. One goal, study the global food system. Second goal, study the local food system. Third goal, provide some design recommendations to create more health in the, in the local food system. Gleaning is the harvesting of produce after the farmer is done with his or her own harvesting. And the gleaning project has been around for five years. So we work with youth groups, church groups, Girl Scouts, um, and also school groups. The kids, they come out and we teach them about where the food is coming from. They get to see firsthand how it's growing. Um, and we also teach them about food security and hunger in their, in their community. The main question of this study is that are there enough acres of farmland in Franklin County to feed to and meet the nutritional needs of Franklin County's projected future population of 77,000 people? So to address this question, Laura and I used a local food shed analysis. So one aspect of the New England Food Food Vision is that it advocates not for complete um, food self-sufficiency. It advocates for maximizing the local food shed potential of an area, which means that it takes into account um, how much food can be grown and what types of food can be grown on Franklin County's farmland and expands that to not only um, maximize foods that are needed for the population, but that could offer, um, offer the resources needed for the larger region. So I was approached by the UMass Magazine to pull together a group of students and have a project on finding out how to make the perfect apple pie. I went ahead and asked my students, some of my students, if they wanted to join an honors colloquium because I knew it would be, it would be a big task and we would need probably a couple of weeks of lab to do this. We de deconstructed the pie and we devoted a lab to each component. What's wrong with school, school food? food. <laughs> Here are a few quotes from the Nuestras Raices youth. The pizza is really greasy. I got the pizza one time and it was like meat pizza, but it wasn't real meat. 
It looked like something you'd get from taco meat, but it wasn't. So I ate it, and it was so gross. I saw the cheese pizza, and it was disgusting. It was so gross. You always cut up the meat, and it's like pink. Oh, yeah, the, cheese, the hamburgers, they're brown on the outside and pink inside. And how about that pink slime? But who cares? It's just school food. We, we care. care. <laughs> The alternative food movement uses frames that many of you may be familiar with, including environmental sustainability, health, social justice, food security. The frame that I chose to focus on for my research was the heritage frame. Um, I believe that the heritage frame has two branches, the patriotic and the historic. It's important for all of us to note that the heritage frame that I'm talking about here is just one way of understanding the social movement. The alternative food movement and the local food movement are extremely diverse and multifaceted and have many levels of membership and involvement, as is wonderfully represented here at this event tonight. All of these issues are intimately connected and can be expressed in the famous words of John Muir, when we try to pick out anything by itself, we find it hitched to everything else in the universe.